I'm about to go live. Hello, my peeps. <laughs> I think I did it this time. Woo! I'm excited. Um, comments aren't showing up yet. So I'd love it if you would comment and tell me if this actually worked, but I can't see the comments yet, so I won't know if you did. Uh, let me, let me, since I'm just pushing my luck with the technology now, let me open up on my iPad, <laughs> Facebook. We'll turn the volume down because Lord knows one of me is enough. Definitely don't need two. Oh no. Sometimes I open up Facebook and I see a picture and I just know it's bad. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, let me see what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get to my page. I believe there is unfortunately been a firefighting fatality in BC, and that is very sad. Okay, come on. Oh, look. Look, look, look. Now, can I see comments? That is the question. <laughs> that is always the question. All right. If there's anybody on yet, if you've all caught up with me, because sometimes it's hard to tell where I am and what I'm doing, um, I would love it if you would comment so I could actually know this is working. All right. So I don't always have a plan. <laughs> at the beginning of the week. I'm trying to get better at deciding, but I, I'm really good at winging it, so I tend to wing it a lot. Uh, this week, our product on parade is the fabulous, boom, take your pick tool. I'm gonna move that out of the way, um, is the take your pick tool. Now, when it first came out, and it's not like it's hard to remember the name, take your pick. When it first came out though, for some reason, I kept forgetting what it was called. And in my head, pick your nose was the one that came. Now, it doesn't even make any sense. And I apologize in advance if I call it pick your nose too. Uh, and nor do I recommend that because it is uh, it's got some sharp appendages to it. And I don't think that would be a very good idea. So back in the day, and I still have them. So two of the tools we had were the paper piercing tool, which a lot of people just call the pointy tool. And we had, well, we still do, the scoring stylus, which has a small end and a big end. But we had a couple separate tools. And then I think, I wanna say three years ago, I was trying to figure that out, but I, I can't exactly remember when it came in. They came out with the take your pick tool. And it was those two tools and then some. And then they added to it. And then they added to it. So this little, this little gem is just, I mean, it is multi-purpose, multi-purpose tool. <laughs> so let me walk you through the take your pick tool and then the reason i decided to do this today because the newest part that i was very excited about i got yesterday and like the second i saw it the first thing that popped into my head i'm like oh this is going to be fun to make reveal strips i have no idea what they're really called to me they're called reveal strips and that's what i was going with so the first thing i did was i get out and i start playing and i and i just i made the assumption that i knew how to do them uh, i didn't but i figured it out so I'm going to save you some paper and give you the one thing that is going to just make it easier. <laughs> and yes, you have to wait for it. Okay, so here's a, the take your pick tool. And what when you first order, you actually get this. So what you have is, is it's two in a tool and it's all interchangeable. So this is the starter pack, I guess, the take your pick tool. One end has putty on it. And as the putty runs low, you just give this little do to crank um, and more and more comes out until it's empty. Hence, it comes with a refill. Plus you can also just separately buy the refill packs. Um, so that's one end. And this end, these, these pieces, like I said, everything is just boom, boom, boom. These pieces just screw in and screw out of this bigger end. So when this one's done, put in the new one, screw it in. Okay, so that's one end. And the, and the one end is bigger than the other. There's no mistaking which one goes which one. This one is threaded, this one is not. So this one has a little lock on it and you basically just twist to move your things in here. So these two pieces both fit in this end and then there's just the one cover. I think the one cover on this end is because this is a little more delicate and you could bend it. I don't know if you would break it, but you would certainly bend it. 
So it's got a pokey tool on one end, which I thought might focus, but probably not. There we go. Anyway, it does have a pokey tool. And then it has kind of a spatula on the other end. Now, I mean, the pokey tool is used for various different things, actually paper piercing, right? You can put holes in things. Um, here, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, do, 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 do. So we have a pierce mat, right? And a sample from something else I was going to show you. I need a little scrap of paper. So before, this is part of the reason for the pierce mat. So before we had, this is just laying on the desk. Before we had, oh, look, focus. Before we had these fancy stitch dies with this little edge on them, you had to do it all by hand. Now some stitched dies have dashes on them and some have dots to get the stitching, right? So in the good old days, you used to have to do it and you could freehand it, but you could also just like use a little ruler and you would go through and you would use a little piercing mat. And you'd make that fun popping sound. And you could add a little bit of dimension and a little bit of fun. Let's see, I think I moved too fast. Come on, let me focus there for a second. Sorry, all of a sudden I got struck by wrinkling my hand was. Um, <laughs> okay, well, you get the idea. There we go. Um, so you could put like little dots on it, right? So you can do that. You can also use it um, to lift up embellishments. Now, I will be honest with you. I find this one a little big. It's it's not as sharp as the original poke tool was, but it does work. And for certain things, it's perfect, right? We'll just pick up on a little. I have nowhere to put it right now, so we'll just leave. Um, but you can use it to like pop behind it and pick up embellishments. Um, you can use it if you're die cutting. I don't know how many fancy dies here, but if you're die cutting and you have lots of little pieces um, and they're they're stuck in there, we have an, the next tool I'm going to show you is actually for that. But you can you know poke your way through. So there's various different things you can do with poking it. I would think for the spatula, you could use it for the embossing paste. Um, I tend to, or whatever you wanted, um, I tend to use it if I stick something down and I realize at the last minute, oh, I don't want to, and I'm like, not quite there. I put it in and I go, wah, 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 and I slide it in between. And yeah, to make the sound effect pretty much every time, um, I slide it in between and then it helps me uh, lift it up without, like if you pull, you tend to bend the cardstock and, and then you can get like creases in it. So this one tends to let me help get it up without putting the creases in the paper. And then the other one is same thing. It just, they're interchangeable, right? So you just pop them in and out. And this one has the scoring tools on it. Now, yes, I'm gonna put it on the small one for, for now. Yes, this paper is gonna be very creative by the time we're done. You can use it to score a piece of paper so you can fold it in half. But there are some very cool techniques that you can do, just a little bit of free handing. And actually with this other one, you could do it, uh, you got two different sizes, so you could actually do different dimensions of them. But um, if you want to take like a big, this would have been better if I'd done it on a bigger sample, but let's see if I'll hold my hand still and if it'll focus. So you could take the white, like the white base layer or any color card base layer and just add some scoring lines to it instead of using an embossing folder, right? And if you don't want to emboss the whole thing, just add some scoring lines in the corner or something, right? So there's, there's cool things you can do with that other than just use it to make it cleaner to fold your cards in half. So this is what we got when we ordered the take your pick tool. Then stampin' up. I'm just gonna push these up a little bit, but pushing them off. Um, we used to have a separate die brush and a piece of foam that you could use for when you're cutting out dies. And yes, I should have cut out a die and had one ready, but I don't. Um, so, the, the other one, the bristles would fall out of. Um, I used mine for a long time before the bristles started to fall out, but eventually they do. So when they were looking at finding a new manufacturer to make this, they, you know, hey, let's make it a take your pick thing. So this is just a stamp case, not one of the older stamp cases. So now one of the other additions you can get, you get two pieces of foam and eventually you will need, you don't need to use two at once, but eventually this other one will get kind of like, popped up a little bit and you know some chunks are gonna be missing and you'll get little pieces stuck to it. It'll just start to get a little bit ratty um, because you're using a brush to and paper and constantly doing this to it. And eventually it does just get a little rough. So they give you a spare. So what they've added on now is this is what you can get. 
So what you get is a dye brush, <laughs> a dye brush, and two mats. Now you don't get a two, you don't get the base with this because because it's meant to go in the end where the putty is. You can just unscrew the putty and screw in the brush, right? And then so what the idea is is you cut your dye out. No, I don't have anything I can pretend is a dye right now sitting here on my desk. Everything is stuck to something. Okay, so here, nope, here we go. This is it. This is the example. Actually, I can show you because some of them, there we go. Look at that. What are the odds? Okay, so this is the die, right? So I cut it out, but you notice how all the little bits and pieces didn't come out on this one end? So the idea behind this die brush is you can go like this, right? And depending which way you do it, you will get them out. Now in something like this, you can pretty much just run your finger over and these bits pop out. But if you're doing really intricate stuff, it um, sometimes it is harder to get out and you don't wanna rip the die in the process. So sometimes you can do it this way and sometimes it's actually easier to flip it over and you just kind of run it over. And what it does is it keeps your paper from ripping and creasing and it eventually just pops them all out. Now, um, I just put the wrong end in here. I wonder what I did with the other end. Um, you could also, I put it somewhere else. Um, I'm gonna do it this way, sorry. If you have a second tool, you can also um, just get, like kind of, I keep this with my brush because this is one of the tools that I had that the dog decided, oh, that's what I did. Okay, now I know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> this, so this is the tool that I had that the dog decided he was gonna use as a chew toy. So it, it got all chewed up and broken up, but there's enough of it left that I can still screw the brush into it. So I keep, so if you have a dog damaged one or a second one, I just keep this at my dye brush thing. And what I keep with it is this um, pokey tool. Seriously, I gotta figure out how to, I gotta figure out the sweet spot for getting it this thing to focus. So now I have that. So in the in the event that you're doing this and you don't quite get all of it out, you could always use your pokey tool just to poke up little pieces too, right? So this little combination, because I can't use this other end for the putty, I just permanently have made it the one that goes with my, um, my brush. And yeah, you can fit it in an old box or um, like a paper pumpkin box. The other thing too, is if you put these little foams and the brush in a box, like something like this, um, then when you're doing this and all the little bits and pieces are falling, they will kind of be contained into the box and not all over the floor. I mean, I still put them all over the floor, but it contains them a little bit. So there was part two of what you could order, was the dye brush, do it that way, and the foam mats. And so at first, oh look, I've got bits and pieces everywhere. Which was the one I was using? This is the one I was using. Nope, this is the one I was using. Um, so there we go. This is what we have, right? It only comes with one cover, um, but the cover fits all the different things. So as you take it out, if you want to, and honestly, a lot of times I just take the, the cover off and throw it in my little container. Um, you wanna keep the cover on the putty end so it doesn't dry out. And if it does dry out, or if when you're putting it on, because I do it all the time, uh, when you're putting it on, if you turn this too much and a little more than you want comes out, um, you can just trim it off, right? Um, I never did show you. So the putty end, the putty end is genius for a couple reasons. When you're making stuff and you have tiny little bits and pieces, I'm gonna find the ones, there we go, um, that you're trying to put on. Um, okay, Lord knows I got a, a lot of little bits and pieces of paper. I don't have one that I want. Okay, so we're just gonna pretend that this leaf is essential to my decorating. Here. <laughs> This, for those of you who weren't watching Wednesday, this was the surprise project that we made. I, sh I showed you all the cards inside and then we made this little cover. So there is the finished product. So let's pretend for some reason, I need this dark green leaf to go on here. So instead of trying to pick up these tiny little pieces and get them on, I can put a little dot of glue. I can use my putty, which I just like stabbed this thing into it. And now I can go like this. And I, if there was glue, I could get it to stick and I could get my little piece to stick. Right, so that you can pick up bits and pieces. Um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna do this because I already got the embellishments. You can also use it for embellishments though. The putty will pick them up. You just kind of put it on and just kind of slide them because they're already adhesive on the back and then stick them down. So that's genius. And then 
when you're using sequins or these are loose frosted dots, which are gorgeous. These, these are not um, adhesive, right? They're loose, so that they're not adhesive. So you can use them in a shaker card or plastic in there, or you can put them on a card. So the same thing, you put down a couple little dots of glue and then you need to pick these tiny little things up and put them on your card. Well, look at that. The putty is just genius for it. So it, it, it's for picking and moving and putting them down and it is super handy. But yes, you don't want it to dry out. So you always want to keep the cap on it when you're not using it. And if it does start to get smished off and, and like, cause eventually little bits will hang out and you kind of keep it trim. Then you just give it a little crank, not too much. And um, it will come out when you crank it and nothing else comes out. That means it's empty, it's time for the refill. So, ta-da. Yes, lots of use, lots of good things. Now in the newest annual catalog, and they weren't ready right away, but then they have since become ready. And so I ordered them. Um, we now have the take your pick crafter tips. Now I tend to take things out and I instantly like take all the packaging or whatever and put it in garbage or recycle, whichever way it goes. But this one I actually only got yesterday. So still have the packages. I worked yesterday. I was helping out at the office. So um, I didn't even make it in my craft room yesterday. I know, poor shame. So they all come in this same kind of craft box with these labels on them. So when you see it, like your original tool will come like this, the brush comes. So you, you kind of start to see that this is what they look like when they come in. And part of me thinks I need to make some kind of a cool carrier that I can put them all in. So I can like open up and now I don't sew. So I'm <laughs> just one of the people that sews because I figure it needs to be fabric. I could easily make a paper one. I don't know, we'll see what, what ends up being. Anyways, these are the new tips that have come up. And see, now that I've, I opened it earlier and I almost threw it out, but I thought, no, I'm gonna save the packaging. But now that I've shown you the packaging, yes, I just threw it in the recycle. Bin. So pop all those out. Um, I wish I knew, I wish I could figure out things to like, make use of these things, but I can't. So here's what we have. In no particular order, just the order I picked them up. We have a much sharper, finer, and a little bit longer. So for whatever you were doing, if you needed to be able to reach farther into something, this one now is longer as well, but this is the same kind of pokey end, but it's much finer. This is much more similar to the original piercing tool. So it now gives you, and I'm, I don't know if this was the intent or not. I, I would think it's a sort of a, hey, see what you can do with it and let everybody know kind of thing. But, but now because it's a smaller tip, it makes smaller holes. It's also a little bit finer. So for smaller embellishments or flatter embellishments, it'll be, it'll be a little easier if you're going to use it to pick them up and like poke underneath. But I also noticed that because it's smaller, now you can make two kinds of piercing, right? I don't know. I said, I don't know if that was the intent, but it was fun. Um, this other end also comes with um, a little like crooked pick which I can see being used to pick things up. And I think some of it is maybe just preference. Instead of a straight, straight tool, sometimes the bent one is much easier to pick things up and place things. Uh, you could still use it to pick little bits out of your die, die pieces and stuff like that. I'm sure there's other uses for it. Let me know what they are. So that's the one. Um, I think it's just called a hook. It actually came with instructions. And I looked at them because I thought, is there a thing that shows you how to use them? or like what they're for or is it, but no, it's just a whole bunch of different languages telling you what to call them and a bit of um, how not to break it when you use it kind of thing. So yes, this is just called the pick tip. This one is called the hobby blade tip. Now this is, uh, I've heard these whole many things, but Olfa knife, exacto knife, buck cutter knife, um, this crafter tip, it is metal, it is heavy, it is sharp. <laughs> And very pointy. So, oh, I forgot to point out. So on our original tool, I'll take our little ends off. Um, the pointy parts. Actually, you know what I never thought. No, you can't. You can't have both ends on. I was going to say it doesn't go in with both ends on. So I'm going down the wrong end. Um, so the yes, the the pick tool goes here, and you can't you can't have this end on when you stick the other end. But. Um, so that screws into the twist end and the crafter blade, what did I say it was called? Hobby blade is um, 
crafter map and crafter blade sound too much like goes into the, the screw in it. Now I can tell you this little baby is sharp. And I know when they first came out with this, one of the first things they showed was if you were cutting out, I have little bits and pieces left because I haven't put anything away from the other day. Um, so if you wanted to, if you were trying to cut out like your letters, now I, I, I fussy cut this with my scissors. Now I'm not going to do it on my fingers. Everybody ch chill. Um, now, if I decided that I wanted to cut the, the, like the inside of this O out, or I wanted to go a little bit more down, there's a limit to how much you can do with your scissors. But with this little blade, I could go down in here and make it a little finer, or I could go in the middle. Um, I could take like a square, oops, come on camera, a square image or piece of whatever. And I, if I want to cut the center out, but I don't have the right size die, like there's lots of things you could do, like just sort of finesse work with this crafter blade. I will also tell you, without showing you totally my next project, that sometimes when you fold things over and they're uneven, I folded this belly band over and I didn't do it right. And so this little this little piece here was like sticking up. And I reached in with this little blade and I went and I pushed just enough to get through the piece of cardstock. And I never even cut the box. And I just went whoop. And I cut off the crooked piece. So now you don't see the crooked that I folded it crooked. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I bet you there's like limitless things you could do with that thing. It is very sharp though, remember. Um, okay, so now the other thing, and this is where I'm thinking we're starting to get a collection of tools. <laughs> um, the other thing you can do, and this is the one where I'm going to show you. Yeah, I'm just going to put this other way for now. So let's just do this for now. I'll put a pile of more on top of there. And that'll hold them in place. So the other thing they came with that I was very excited about is the rotary cutter. Now, this is called a rotary perforating tip. And I saw there's a little thing on it here that slides. And if you look, it's covering and uncovering the blade. And you can tighten this up. This is a little, not the screws actually on this side. Oops. So you, if this starts to get too loose and this thing is like falling down, you can use this to tighten it up a little or if your blade is getting too loose. So this is the adjusting. But this is just when you're not using it to cover the blade. And it is. Now, is it super sharp like the Ulfa? No, but it's probably sharp enough to cut yourself. But you also don't want to damage your blade. So when I first saw this, my first thought was, it's like I know in quilting there's rotary cutters for fabric and stuff. And I thought, I guess you could cut your paper that way. If you wanted, sometimes when you're cutting things out, Oh, I have a card that, oh, here we go, look at that. We're gonna make this card. I think next week is the plan. So this card is all folded and it goes like this. Yay. Now I cut from here to here um, using the scoring or the my trimmer. It's not always easy and people have different preferences. And for some reason, it's totally not focusing. I think you could use a blade like this to cut it. So that was my thought, right? But as it turns out, you're still gonna use your trimmer for that card. And it is, I, I'll show you how. <laughs> um, because it, this is perforated, it wouldn't actually work to cut like a nice solid line like I thought. The intent for this one is to get the stitched look or the perforation look. Now, if you do what I did and you run it back and forth a couple of times, oh yeah, you will totally cut through, but you don't get a clean cut. Like you get a bit of a, of a frizzy cut um but the intent of it yeah i think is more like a stitch thing so as soon as i realized the blade was not straight perforations so yeah like i said reveal strip <laughs> now why do we call it a reveal strip i'll show you why and i'm actually going to show you a project because i made projects um seriously though what happened to my camera okay let's see if we can make this focus i'm just going to sit here until it does Isn't this bird cute? Seriously, loving the bird's eye view. It is adorable. And seriously, why were we focused before and now we're not? See, now everything close is focused, but nothing far away is focused. I, I screwed it up. So, oh, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. Is it the shiny case? Is it the multiple tools? Or is it just technology messing with me and laughing its heads off? Okay, 
So I made a little gift card holder with the little bird. And yes, you'll notice I'm using the paper from the other day. Because as I said, I didn't get in here yesterday. Everything from Wednesday is still on my desk. Now, I could have written on the back of this, which if I was giving it to somebody, I would have written it on the back. I might have actually even stamped something else. But this is, I would figure, for writing. But you'll notice that this is all sealed up. There's no way to open it. But you know what there is? There's a reveal strip. So I did debate about putting like something here. And I did have an extra little leaf stuck here. with, the, And I just hand wrote the rope hand wrote pull on it I didn't like the way it looked so in this case I've just kind of folded it up but I think whichever way you go with it if I'd put maybe like a little heart or something on it or I don't know but the way it, it just I didn't like the original look but here's the thing and I have to I have to turn it a bit sideways because I need to be able to do it with my right hand wow. reveal strip <laughs> that was the idea behind it um it didn't cleanly rip but that's okay and yes I know I made it just so I could rip it but then look at this and I I purposely did it so that it would cut the top of the gift card I did think it would be fun to have like secret shopper type things where you get 10% off or 25% off or something like that and so whichever size thing you're putting in here and this is just like a fake gift card or a fake credit card it doesn't even work um I would say make this strip so that you're not fighting to get it out so I purposely made it like this and I purposely made this so that it would stand out differently. I also put just a piece of sticky strip down the middle and didn't tape the ends. So I covered the unsightly lines. Uh, you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. Um, but it, I also, I love the way it looked like just from a decoration standpoint, but then it also gave like an indication that this strip was different, right? So you pull the reveal strip off and you reveal the gift inside. And then it's just like, this. it didn't totally destroy the whole thing um I, I hadn't had a chance to try yet if I put this on and I had put like a solid piece of DSP when I ripped the cardstock how nastily would the DSP have ripped or if I scored it ahead of time or do I because I'm not sure well I guess we'll find out because you know what now that I say it out loud I'm gonna do it I'm not sure if we can perforate the DSP without ripping it um okay so here's basically what I did and why did I use white? I don't know. So this is this is half a cardstock or half a card base, I mean, right? So a quarter sheet of cardstock, which I scored in half. And then I made our little perforation lines. And again, I just kind of folded up this end, right? And then once I put the perforation lines in and I made them so that they would work for my, my gift card. On the other side, I put tear and tape. And for the sake of this, because yeah, hindsight, white was not a good idea. I put tear and tape on the card. Now I did it on the side with the perforations. But marker is not showing as well as I'd hoped. So I put them here so that I wouldn't tape this shut, right? I wanted to be able to see where it was. So instead of putting it on this side or somewhere else, I put it on after I made the perforations on the side with the perforations so I could see it. Now when I when I put my card in, where'd my card go? When I put my card in like this, and I peel off all my pieces and I close, I seal it up like this. Now my card is inside, or my coupon, or depending how you made it, if you scored a little um like a gusset to it, made this thing, you could put treats in there. And then I have my little reveal strip, right? So now it's just a matter of decorating. So like I said, I made it. And I, and I don't know if there's any magic to this. I just picked a random number. I wanted this thank you to fit on the top. So I made it wide enough for the thank you. And then I just wanted a, like a thin strip so that I had room for my bird on the bottom. So it's going to depend on what you're like the size of your stuff. I don't know if there's a right or a wrong that, to get this. And then like I said, I just, that's how I put mine with the extra different color. So that's the reveal strip. Now in the process of making this though, <clears throat> excuse me, here's what I learned. Um, you have to use the right base to get things to go. So just a minute, because I'm trying to, there we go. They're all stuck together. So remember I told you I was going to use these scraps for something. I'm going to use these scraps for something. Okay, so I got my rotary tool and I went like this and I thought, oh, perfect. Now I can't just do it on my table, obviously, because I want to be able to make holes. So I need something to make holes with. So what I did was I took out my nice little pierce mat, which is, very heavy duty foam, but it's squishy. 
right? And I thought, perfect. Now, here's the two mistakes I made right off the hop. Um, I didn't want to, to do it too hard, so I did it too soft. Well, too soft didn't actually help me. So I went like this and I did it, and every now and again it would go through, and then every now and again it wouldn't. So <clears throat> I actually had my ruler when I did it the first time because I want to make it straight, right? So I did it like this, but I was like soft, and then I kind of went too light, and then I went up. And so then I went, oh no. So then I pushed back. So, what, but if you go over top of where you've already gone, you make a hole, right? So, so it's a one direction, go once. If you come back the second time, you're gonna rip it. And like I said, it's fuzzy. It's not a clean rip. You're not gonna use this rotary tool to make a straight edge. So I thought, okay, fine. I will, I will get a little more even weight. I'll push a bit harder than I thought. So then when I realized what I needed was, you kind of want to hear the paper, like the first pop of the paper, and then you know you're in enough. So I was trying to go like this, but as I was going, I had to get like, I had to start off the edge of the paper. And then I got a good thing. And as soon as I went through, I was like, great, I've got it now, but it's like practically already ripped just by the time I get a nice even one pass. And so I thought, well, this, this is not, no. So I did on this first one, I had one side was better and one side was almost cut through. So when I put the paper over top, you couldn't see that, but it wouldn't have been very durable for very long. So then I just thought, okay, well, this obviously is not too soft. It's not working. I must need something else. So I went to my next most favorite, almost every time sitting on the table while I craft tool, the silicone mats. Um, I've got too many things going on that piece of paper. Let's grab another little scrap over here. And I'm not sure what that was, but hopefully it's not something I need because I just knocked it all on the floor. So then what I did is I took my silicone mat. Oh. <laughs> okay. You can't see me looking around. But for right now, I was just like, okay, what did I do? Because I thought I was holding my tool and I was looking for my ruler. Yeah, the ruler that is in my hand. So here's the tool, ruler's in my hand. Yeah. So then I thought, well, let's just try it on here. And people, this is the secret because I lined up my ruler because I wanted to make it like a gap, right? So I was using my ruler and I went on here and same thing. I poked enough to kind of like feel it pop through the paper. And then I very consistently, until I did on camera, went like this. And there's a couple of spots where it's a little deeper. You can't really see it very well on here, but I have the perforations, looks like a little bit deeper in a couple spots. So if I was to do this twice, and I'm just, I'm looking at my lines, right? And it is still, it is still a little bit of trial and error. You're still only gonna go one direction. Um, here's the next, I got two different things going. First off, I need it to be shorter than that, so it'll actually do what it's supposed to do. Um, it is, yeah, a little bit of trial and error. So you see, you see all these white strips? You know when you cut card bases and you have all the little strips left over? Well, they're perfect for sentiments, but they're also like perfect for practice because you don't want to practice this on printer paper or your old bills that you have sitting on your desk because it is way thinner paper and you will you will tear it super easily and you will not get a feel for it. You need to practice on cardstock. So practice on the little white strips or the little other strips you've cut apart. So like I said, when you do it this way, it is way more consistent. It is the right bugger. See if I hold it down here, it'll focus, but you won't be able to see it. Oh, look at that. Way better job. Like, and, and in this case, there's only a couple places that are a little deep. Did not go through at all. This is the base. This, many, many hours of grief. This is the ticket. So use your silicone mat behind your little perforation thing. And now if this was <laughs> actually stuck to something, then boop, reveal strip. <laughs> I'm actually gonna keep that and take a picture. So when I say reveal strip, people actually know what I mean. Um, and I did, I did perforate all the way, way to the end. I just stopped myself before I got there. If you wanted people to rip this off and maybe be able to like pull it back to close or like if something was written on here, um, just when you, when you, when you decorate your stuff, like if I did, if I didn't want this end to come all the way off, I could have just put a strip of something down the side or paper or something, or 
only perforate to a certain part and don't actually do the last little bit. I would, I would have had lots of room. I could have ended a quarter inch sooner and I still would have been able to get this gift card in and out, All right? So now, as we were talking earlier, um, there we go. I was gonna see what the heck did I do with it? We were discussing whether or not it would rip this paper. So I'm definitely using this as my mat. I am, I am probably going to get it wrong the first time because I'm going to go lighter because I know this paper is not. I don't know. I still got to, I still got to push it a bit harder than I thought um, because this paper is, is thinner than cardstock, right? So I was a little trepidatious at the beginning. Look at my big fancy words. And I did not cut hard enough or push hard enough at the very beginning. And then I did. And it didn't actually rip. So again, you still only get one shot at it, but I don't think you want to start by pushing too hard. So I'll show you what I meant by not going all the way to the end. I'll just do this right in the middle. So, and I don't think it matters which direction you go. So I'm going to go top to bottom, and then I'm going to move over, I don't know, half an inch, give or take. And I'm going to go bottom to top. Yeah, you just want nice steady, you do have to push a little bit. You do want nice steady pressure though. And no, I, can't see it at all in this pattern. Um, I did not rip my cardstock or my DSP at all. I would imagine if you push too hard, you will. And then, like I said, so this is what I was doing, right? I was just kind of pushing it to do it. But if you want, you can always just do this too, right? Just cut on the line for the first little bit, and that gives you your little curl. And then for the left handed people in the audience, hey, let's do it left handed this time. We're going to go like this. And I'm pulling pretty good, but I can tell I've hit the end of my perforations, right? So if you stop before the end, it's not gonna go. And you know, it just occurred to me, if you had a uh, had like an elephant stamp or something and you stamped it so his trunk was on, there's gotta be all sorts of fun ways you can use this strip. If you stamped it so his trunk was on here and you pulled it up like this, it naturally curls and then your elephant would have like a curly trunk. I don't even know if we have a stamp with the elephant facing forward. I know we have side views. But there's got to be fun ways or like arms where the arms wide open and then they, there's got to be fun ways that these curls can make these little reveal strips. So anyways, I am going to show you the last little project and then I'm going to stop rambling. Um, so this was the other thing I made. And yes, look at the colors. Um, partially as a reminder, in my video on Wednesday night, I said, what does this pattern of DSP in the lovely copper play? What movie does it remind you of? So you need to go to my post from Wednesday night. And if you know the answer, um, put your name down there with the answer. And anybody who answers gets in the draw for a full lovely package of these amazing, oops, that's my little cheat sheet saying, don't forget to do it, um, in color embellishments, which I love so much and have almost used an entire pack of already. Anyways, this is another thing that was delayed in the annual catalog was these scallop treat boxes. So I'll show you that in a second. So here's another little, just something I came up with. Um, and you know how we put belly bands around boxes to keep them closed? And sometimes they're hard to like, you know, on and off and some people don't know. I thought, well, why not do this? Now, this is one of the ones that I did to begin with when I was still practicing, but I was, at this point I thought, it's not gonna fall apart and I'm about to rip it anyways, I'm gonna use it. If I was making these actually give out, I wouldn't have because you see, I've pushed too hard. So like, it's already just about separated, but I think it doesn't have to just be like a flat thing like that. Like I think instead of the belly band, make the belly band like you normally would. My belly band is joining underneath this label so you can't see it. And then make yourself a little reveal strip and voila, <laughs> you can open your present that way. <laughs> and then, the, I mean, this is, this, I did put it on, um, dimensionals so I can pop this off and reuse it um, but yeah it's just a kind of a fun way to open stuff now would I have normally stamped something on here probably but in the in the case of this I was so busy playing with this box I didn't so when the box opens voila, there's a gift card in it and it actually comes with this little piece that that uh, you, you tape in and I was looking at all these different ways because you could fit it many different ways you could put it upside down so this little piece is more like a handle um, it, it almost sits like just like a table. You could put stuff underneath it and put it on top. But in the picture, I noticed they had it like it was at an angle. And so I realized if you fold on the little, oops, my words in the way. 
pull down the little score line. You can see the piece down here and fix that to the bottom. And then you just fold it down. When you open it, it kind of pops up like, hello, I'm here. So anyways, that was just a fun little thing. These are back in stock now. So I ordered those. And you know what? You could gift somebody a set of these tips because they all fit in this box. <laughs> so anyways, reveal strips. I was very excited when I saw the perforated blade about reveal strips. But all together, they are a very handy set of tools that you can do many things with. Just remember, the, the perforations work better on your silicone mat than they do on your piercing mat. You're welcome. <laughs> It'll save you many, many pieces of paper. So yeah, little flat things. Like I said, I, I can see making little treat holders out of them. Um, my little extra strip that I had on there that I liked. We have the, the dye brush. We have spatulas and putty and pokey tools and little mats, you name it. The take your pick tool. It's awesome. <laughs> that ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to reach my side. Is today's product on parade. Da, 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 da. Um, I'm trying to get like fancier graphics and do these kind of things. I like old cheesy 70s announcer type stuff, as you may have noticed. Um, but I haven't quite figured all of that out yet. I mean, I can barely go live today without issues. So I'm going with McCann. <laughs> but nonetheless, that's our product on parade. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Uh, let me know if you need any of these things or you have any more questions about them. I am happy to help. And um, I am working on the technology this weekend so that by next Wednesday, when I go live, it's going to be flawless. I'm going to have a face cam. I'm going to have a desk cam. I'm going to switch between them. It's going to be glorious. I, I'm, I'm in the if you build it, they will come mode. So I'm going to do it. It's going to be glorious. In the meantime, I'm going to see Aladdin at the Jubilee tonight with my son and some friends. And I'm going to chill this weekend. I'm going to do a little extra work on the one day. And like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to master technology. So I hope you have an awesome weekend doing all the things you want to do. And uh, we will see you next week. Take care. And take your pick. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.